everyone. If you can hear me just one second. Hi everyone. If you can hear me just one second. Let me figure this out. Here. Um, no, I can't hear anything yet. Well, they can. I can't hear you now. Okay. Oh, there we go. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Awesome. Oh, yay. Okay, great. There we go. Do you think we're going to be able to do our fancy thing today or probably not? Okay. Well, we're trying, we're always trying something new, as you guys know. So we found a new thing because we noticed that things just weren't as clear. If any of you guys know, um, Pastor Alan Didio, who helped us with Saturate North Carolina, his son, Evan, actually came out um, and helped us make our studio nice. But then once all of the camera looked nice and the lighting looked nice, and we're like, oh, maybe we need to up the thing that we're streaming with because we can't blame it on the camera or setup anymore. So we're trying a few different things, of course. Um, but so hopefully we can get that running next time. And I think that one you can like I can like show you links and we can yeah. like, it's real fancy and we'll look so professional. <laughs> um, so that's what we're hoping to start getting going this next time. It will be better. Yeah. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't know if you can hear Jess in the background. She's like, it'll be better. It will be. <laughs> we are always trying to make it better for you guys. Um, so while we wait for a couple people to sign on, um, it's so cool. I don't know if any of you guys know, we've been doing, me and Shane have been doing um, in eight weeks discipleship. And so it's really cool actually to see some of you guys that have been joining us every week for that um, on this call too. How do I look, Jess? We'll, we'll think. I mean, you look, <laughs> you look beautiful. We'll work on, we'll work on out. I, quality. I messed up all the lighting. So don't let everyone see this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that, so I'm so excited for us to be able to hear from um, Joe Moody tonight. If any of you guys have been to really any of our things, whoa, that you got me real close there. Um, but she's just like the real deal. And I'll talk about her a little bit more in a second, but I do have just a couple things that while we wait for people to jump on, I'll give you um, quick little updates before we jump into training. So um, the first thing, okay, guys, I just checked because I wanted to make sure that I got the link for you guys. Um, for the camp meeting, we have 488 people registered already for the camp meeting that's going to be in North Carolina in July. Um, so to give people perspective, this far out in when we had Kentucky, we had 50 people registered. <laughs> <laughs> so if they're like, they're like, what? I'm like, it's like a big deal. <laughs> like our goal when we launched, we're like, if we can get a hundred people on the first day, and we normally set like high goals, you yeah. know. <laughs> And then at the end of the year, we're like, wait, we got it. Um, so that like actually is a huge deal um, for us. So 488 is amazing. So if you guys have not already, um, give me one second. I'm gonna grab the link for you guys so that you guys can sign up um, even while we're just waiting for a second. Here we go. So I'm gonna put it in the chat. Um, so this is camp meeting registration. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can use that link and you can register for the camp meeting. Um, there's only, I think, 100 spots available for camping. So if you guys want to camp on the land, um, make sure you sign up for that ASAP. Um, but we're really excited for everything that we're um, starting to plan. We're going to have Joe Moody at the camp meeting, which is so exciting. And we'll have Robert Henderson, Jeremiah Johnson, so many of our fun friends, some that you saw last summer and some new to the crew. So we're very excited about that. And then, oh, also, I don't know. I don't think we've had, like announced this yet. We might've, I think we told you guys, um, that really what we want to do is buy a piece of land here in the Wilmington area. And that's where we actually want to host the camp meeting. So um, the team has been 
going and looking at lots of property. Um, we live in a place where flood zones are a thing. I didn't grow up with that, but it's really a concern here. And so navigating like even different kinds of land and we want to make sure we would love for it to be by water. Obviously we baptize lots of people, so that's helpful. Um, but yeah, so that's something you guys can definitely be praying about, but also um, we would love to invite you to invest into that. Um, Jess, have we set up like a pledge campaign for that one yet? Um, yeah, if they go to saturateglobal.com mm -hmm. slash land. Okay. But it's not pretty yet, so. Okay, so don't <laughs> judge us yet. Again, something we're making better. But that link that I just sent, so it's saturateglobal.com slash land. And that's where you can set up um, a pledge. There's Jess, um, which is really just helpful too. We're realizing with um, like needing to get like a loan or showing a bank that we can actually pay for a piece of property because we're a nonprofit. It helps to show that there's recurring finances coming in so that they can believe us when we say that we're um, good for paying for it. Um, and then, oh, okay. And yes, so this is specific for you guys. So something new this year, we really wanted to know everyone on our team um, to just have everything running really smoothly, have trainings ahead of time. Um, and to be able to do that, we are asking, we're really only having you guys be our team at our events this year. And so um, obviously we know that not all of you are able to maybe able to make it to all of the events. So, cause we're going to have the camp meeting and we'll have the gospel raid in New York. And so, um, this form, the application is just going to help us, um, stay a little bit more organized. So we know. Oh, perfect. It is so nice. This is a nice little, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was not planned, but really nice. Um, yeah, I think those were on my notes. That's everything. Was there anything else Jess, that you can think of? Oh, just maybe just have them be praying for Friday. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this Friday, um, we're going to be in Charlotte. We've invited um, people really from all over the country, lead pastors from all around the country. I don't know if you've seen the emails, but we really wanted to get lead pastors together to talk about like, what does this look like for us to um, see revival come in America? How can we work together? So we're having Dr. Michael Brown and Jeremiah Johnson and Becca Greenwood. They'll all be joining us. Um, yeah, to just cast vision and let people know how we can all just do it together. So if you guys can be praying for that, we would really love to get churches from all around the country that then when people get saved, we would have churches to then send them to, um, to actually be discipled and learn how to follow Jesus and just part of the local body. Um, that's super important to us. So if you guys would be praying for that, that would be awesome. Can I introduce Joe? Yeah, you can introduce <laughs> Joe. All right, I'm just going to sneak in. This is Definitely not how we normally do things, but not I'm here. All. And so we can plug that in too. Oh, Are we, we going to stretch? Your chair. Oh, okay. Guys, we're, we're so professional. I was going to say, <laughs> next time we'll have it more figured out. Hi, everyone. So good to see you guys. Ah! I'm going to be watching on my phone, which is why you see me on another one. But I was trying to help Vic because we, we have a really good new streaming service. <laughs> we just don't understand technology, but we'll get there and it's going to be amazing and beautiful. Um, but I'm so excited. I feel like I've just been so filled with expectation of what God's going to do. And I'm excited to have land and just have a place where I don't have to spend $15,000 to extend a day of revival <laughs> and just to have a place where we can do whatever we want and know the police officers and bring them brisket and they won't be mad at us all the time and they won't be like who the heck are you you'd be like we're the ones that brought you brisket like the last month remember <laughs> and it will be amazing and we were just meeting the churches here mm -hmm. and building relationships and I really feel like we're just creating a space for revival to land. And so I'm really excited for you guys tonight. And I, as you guys know, I hate talkers that just talk a lot of talk and can't do anything. I felt like most of my Christianity was people telling me stories of things that happened 300 years ago. And it was like really depressing. Cause I just was like, why can no one demonstrate anything. Like, I just want to experience the real thing. Like if this is real, like surely there's got to be someone that 
like can actually like pray for the sick and they'll recover and not just like have just great theology on it. Like, I, I agree with the theology, but like someone please do it and let me see. And I remember hearing rumors about Joe Moody. And honestly, I was a skeptic. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, that's so great. I actually like did her branding and designed her website like years before I knew her. But I was like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, she does these things like her and everyone else. Like, sounds great. And um, then I, my friend Jess Tate, who many of you guys know, she just was like, Jesse, listen, she's like, you know, I am not a fluff like just going to say everyone's awesome person. She's like, Joe is the real deal. And uh, I did a phone call with her and Jess and she just was like unraveling so many things like leadership things that I was like struggling with. And then we had her come out to Orange County and she lit our team up like just the love of God flooded our house. And I was bawling, crying, watching people get just heart healed in a moment, just words of knowledge, like, and not words of knowledge, like you're going to be a rich and famous one day, but like words of knowledge from the heart of the father that can heal wounds that no one wants to touch. Like that's the kind of healing I'm talking about. And then we had her come to Kentucky last summer. And at the last second, my dad decided the day before to fly out there and he had been having serious medical issues. He comes over to our trailer and Joe's like, well, of course we got to pray for him. I didn't even tell her anything was going on. So Joe and Jess go out there and pray for my dad. And my dad's not charismatic. Like he, he's Presbyterian <laughs> and he thinks what I'm doing is very weird. And he just was like, afterwards, I was like, how are you feeling dad? And he was like, I feel no pain. And then he went to the doctor and I was like, okay, maybe he's just saying that to make me like feel good. So then he went to the doctor and all of his medical charts and reports were totally like perfectly healed. And I was just like, what? Like, and that's just one of many healings that happened that weekend and many of the stories that Joe has to say. But what I love about Joe is she's not just like, I'm the most am amazing, like anointed person, which she is. And she can say that if she wants, she's shaking her head. No, but here's the thing. Like she actually is really anointed when there are people that are not, and they make whole ministries out of their not anointing. And she actually is anointed one, but the best thing is she literally will just grab a four-year-old, five-year-old by the hand and be like, here, take your hand like this. This is how you do it. And little kids are working in miracles and signs and healing and wonders. And then adults are like, well, if that four-year-old could do it, like surely I can. So I want you guys to literally like take out a notepad, take out a pen, press into the Holy Spirit right now and allow yourself to receive from this person that actually has the like true ability to release an impartation of healing. So Welcome, Joe. Let me see. If yes, you you're such a crack up, girl. Yeah, Thank you. I love you guys. What a privilege. We love you. We love you. Privilege to be with you. I, uh, I've i been having internet stuff going on like for the last couple of days. So right now in Jesus name. Say no uh, in Jesus name. We're just going to have a good time. I'm going to be able to see all you people and not myself. I want to be able to, uh, did you? Yeah. Hey, it's good to see you guys. Can you give me a gallery view? How come I can't do that on my phone? Did you guys change something? Can you see it? Nope. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. weird. I always can. The right hand corner has yeah, that. Yeah, little... no, I'm doing it. I can only see yeah. like five. I can't see everybody. Oh, uh, it's probably because you're on your phone. No, no. I'm on my, I'm actually on my MacBook. But I just got off a bunch of Zoom, so that's weird. Don't know. Okay, let me start. But uh, <laughs> when when <laughs> when I get to this point, because I actually have some words for some people. I, I can I can, I need to see Wendy, 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 just real quick. Here, I can highlight her. Can you highlight her? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. So, Lord, I just thank you right now for what you're doing with this whole crew of ambassadors. Uh, and and Wendy, I just see you. Do, do we know each other? Why do you look so familiar to me? You look so familiar. Do, have we met? 
Maybe we've met. You're muted, Wendy. Yeah. Are you talking to me? I am talking. Oh, to you. my goodness. Yeah. Have we met? No. Okay. Well, it's a total God thing. So, Father, I just thank you for Wendy, who, when you're a catalyst of hope uh, and you are a catalyst of encouragement. And, and I want you to know that you have felt like for a long time that uh, when is my time? When is my time? time when is my time uh to affect big change in generations and and to bring revival and i'm going to tell you right now that this is your time that that you have been a steward in the deepest darkest places in intercession and for praying for the will of god to come you've been through so many things in your life and you are such a champion of faith every time the wall has fallen down and the floor has been yanked out from under you you've gone yeah but god yeah but god you have a gift of faith, and we need people like you to steward revival, not only in this nation, but in the world today, because the gift of faith is given by God when you are formed in your mother's womb. You don't just have faith, Wendy, you have a gift of faith. And when you have a gift of faith, mountains move, people are healed, and you walk in miracles. So I want you to put your hands out right now. For those of you who have a gift of faith, you know the difference. You got friends whose faith is like Jesse's and mine, where you're like, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. But then there's people who are like, it doesn't matter what it looks like. I know that I know that I know my God will do this thing. And that's you, Wendy. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask your Holy Spirit to fall right now upon this woman because she is a woman who is of wise counsel and who is of patient endurance. And I say to you, you're a woman in this hour right now in the name of Jesus who walks in resiliency. And that is the word of the Lord for this year of 2022. Resiliency is the ability to bounce back after blows. And the Lord said, you have bounced back, you have bounced back, you have bounced back, and I'm gonna give you what you have been praying for. So Father, everything that you have given me in Jesus' name to move in miracles and move in healing all over this planet, I just ask you to release that now over your daughter that when she lays her hands on the sick, they will get well. And Wendy, I, I just see a very particular love for people in wheelchairs and people who've been crippled from birth, people who've been maimed, that kind of thing where it just melts your heart, especially if they're a young person. I just see the Lord putting on your hands his oil of anointing and he's saying, trust me in this. I don't care if they were born or not able to walk when you put your hands on them and you call upon his name and you declare their bodies healed by the blood of Jesus, they will be healed. So Father, I thank you for this woman of faith. I thank you for the counsel of the most high that comes into her heart at night. You are a person who stewards the presence of God and you get up in the night when the Lord wakes you up, you're a big, big dreamer. And the Lord says, pay attention to your dreams in this hour. And I bless you, sweetie. He hasn't forgotten about the things you have prayed for for such a long time. This is your year of breakthrough. This 2022, this latter half and 2023, you're going to watch the Lord open doors that nobody can shut in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So Lord, I just thank you for this entire crew of ambassadors. I thank you for what's on their lives, God. You told me the other day, uh, you asked me, I want you guys to know this right now. The Lord is asking you, what's your occupation? Some of you are clergy. Some of you uh, are in the workforce, some of you are authors, some of you uh, are, are in uh, staying at home, taking care of your families. Mm -hmm. The Lord is asking you, what's your occupation? And he asked me that, I was in Brazil last week. He said, what's your occupation? And I said, I'm a minister. And he didn't say anything. And then I knew that wasn't the right answer because if he didn't go, yeah, Joe, good, you know, good job. He didn't say anything. And I was like, uh-oh. And then I was quiet. I was like, I wonder what I am if I'm not a minister. Then he asked me again, he said, what's your occupation? in the in about four in the morning i so then i was like uh i'm a child of god that's what i tried and he go and he says to me that's not your occupation that's your position so then i was like oh dang that's my position i love that position but then that means i don't really know what i my occupation is <laughs> clearly clueless and then he said why don't you ask me what your occupation is so that's always great when the Lord's going to ask you a question and then he gets to give you the answer. Best setup ever. He said, you are a kingdom ambassador. I want to tell you that you are all kingdom ambassadors. And in this day and in this time, you have got to have that in the forefront of your mind. Because in every government, an ambassador speaks for the sovereign who sent them the ambassador has the full authority, full identity of the sovereign that sent them into the foreign land so that they could make the foreign land 
like the sovereign land they came from. You are a citizen of heaven, seated in heaven right now. And the Lord calls you a kingdom ambassador because he is desperate for people to know him. And we are in a season where he is looking for the kingdom ambassador to stop acting like a minister. A minister only has the governmental officiality over a certain section of the foreign land. You have jurisdiction of the entire land, everywhere you put your feet, you are speaking for Jesus because Jesus calls you his own. And so I'm here to tell you that we are to reach the lost generation, Gen Z in particular, through this unification and through walking in signs and wonders and miracles. My son's 23. He's a Gen Zer. He's built for the supernatural. He doesn't want to sit in a church service and listen to somebody talk. He wants to hear the word of God and see it demonstrated. And so when I take him out and, and, and he sees miracles, he's like, oh my gosh, this is God. So if we don't step in and step up and into this kingdom ambassador identity, power and authority moves with you as you surrender to God in intimacy. And I'm going to teach you a couple things tonight and I'm going to do it fast. If you come to the Come to the tent revival meetings and we'll learn a whole lot more together. But uh, I have this passion to see ordinary people walk in extraordinary grace and love of God. You can't do a miracle without love because the miracle is love. It's the love that saved the world. It's Jesus in action. And the reason I take four-year-olds and five-year-olds and I pray with them is because there's no reason that a person can stand there and say, I can't do this when a four-year-old has no clue what they're doing and you say to them, put your hands on that person and tell that pain to go out in Jesus name. And they do it. And it does over and over and over. If you're lacking some faith, you don't have Wendy with you Get a kid, get a little kid. A little kid has all kinds of faith because they don't know any better. That's why Jesus said, come to me as little children. When, I, when the Lord reminds me of that, I said, you know, toddlers are pretty clueless. And he said, you ought to try that. Be clueless. Because when you're clueless, you don't think you need to know this or you're not afraid of that. You'll just go do it. And when you step in obedience with me, I'll show up. He is amazingly faithful when we are absolutely immediately obedient to what he's calling. I want you to turn uh, in your Bibles real quick with me. Turn to 1 Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 11. And hey, uh, Vic, Jess, somebody called time because I think, uh, am I supposed to be done at, I'm supposed to be done at seven, right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, you sorry. Have... You said okay. seven, but it's eight here, but yes, you're right. Oh, yeah, I mean seven my time. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, so um, here's, I just want you to keep your Bible open to there. What I want to teach you is how to get words of knowledge. So since I can't see all of you, for whatever reason, my screen's doing that weird thing. Um, I just want to know uh, how many of you have been taught about words of knowledge before. Does anybody know? Wendy knows. Like, is it most of you? Can you yes. see, Vic? Is it most everybody? You guys know how to get them? Yeah, there's like maybe third of you guys. Okay. So for those of you who know, and you really roll in this, then I hope that you learn uh, at least one thing new, but if you don't, you are, you are already ambassadors and you're going to be working uh, with the Lord in the different saturate environments that you come to. So you can help other people who are on this call and the ones who aren't uh, be able to roll in this uh, seamlessly by the power of the Holy Spirit. So uh, I'm just grateful to the Lord that he gives us such an indication that he wants to do something through words of knowledge. The, the way that we grow in this gifting is intimacy with the Lord. The closer you are to Jesus, the closer you are in intimacy with him, the more you know he's either talking or he's not talking because he, he speaks to you as he speaks to me in very different ways. Some people uh, have impressions. Some people see things. Some people hear it. They feel it. Uh, I'm not a, a typically big, I'm definitely more of, a, of an impression person, or I just know in my knower that that's about to happen, or that's going to that's gonna work. When you work with the Lord, knowing his Holy Spirit in the prophetic, that's when you begin to see uh, the growth happen. So through intimacy, you know his voice, his sheep hear his voice, 
and, and we move on every word that comes from the mouth of God, not that came from the mouth of God, but the very revelation of this day and this hour. And the Lord's very clear in what he's speaking about. So intimacy with Jesus is creating an instant obedience with the Holy Spirit, because the more we know him, the faster we move when he begins to speak. So if you want to have a life of miracles and really seeing the Lord move when you pray, you got to instantly, <laughs> he tells you, go up to that person over there. When you're, you're in a hurry, you don't have time. You, you're like, I, I, you know, Lord, don't you know, I got stuff to do. I'm going somewhere. And he goes, go over there. Like you're at the car wash. Get out of your car. Don't go through the car wash. Go over there. Go inside. See if this guy has a daughter that's six years old, blah, blah, blah. And you don't do it. Well, then it's harder and harder for you over the years when you keep on going now later. The fastest way to grow in miracles and healings is the minute you get an inkling, I should go over there. And maybe you don't even know why you have to go over there. That's, that's how he speaks to me most often. And I know he does it and gets a laugh out of me. I'm in airports constantly. He sends me over to strangers and I don't even know why I'm supposed to go over there, but I go. And the minute I get over there, then he gives me like maybe one word or, or two words, but I don't know what he's about to do. He will make me go over there with an invitation of love. And I'm not going over there looking at that person like they're a freak show or that they're my project. I'm going over there with the love of Jesus. And the whole time I'm walking towards him, I'm saying, Lord, what do you think about this person? How do you feel about this person? Is there something you want to say to this person? Give me your heart for them. I'm not going over there waiting to be relevant. I'm going over there just to, just to give love. Sometimes you guys, the word of knowledge that changes a heart is simply to say, do you know how much the Lord loves you? And I think in our stream, we can get all caught up with, that doesn't seem very Holy Spirit, you know, inspired and brand new. You know what though? If that person's never heard that God loves them like he loves them, it changes everything, right? I know a lot of you've done that. So when you get a word of knowledge, it increases your faith. The minute you hear something or see something, we'll go through the ways that they come and you act on it. You can be sure that God has just given you a key right in your hand that he's about to move. You might not know how he's going to move and you might not have an expectation that it's going to be this grand miracle, but you don't know unless you go. You don't know unless you go. So when you Move by faith, according to who God is, and according to you being a kingdom ambassador, your faith releases power. When somebody has faith for something in a moment, it's powerful. A person with the gift of faith has power all the time because they just believe God is who he says he is and that he does everything that he says he's going to do in his word. And then they just move like that in life. Very few people have that gift. Most of us, we're like, okay, I got it today. And then the next day you're like, yeah, I don't have it today, right? That's <laughs> just like normal life. So God gets the glory because when we move through obedience at the inkling, he's about to do something. It's like our amen to his invitation. The man, he invites us with a, with a little bit of an, of an encouragement. We go, I'm there, I'm going. That's our yes and amen. Whatever you want to do, Father, I'm there with you. And as we move in obedience with him, then revelation comes in the obedience. Here's the deal, guys. We're always waiting for revelation to come while we're sitting here. You know, good luck with that in this season. God wants action. He wants people move it or lose it right now. He wants people to go out in love and be loved. And so the more that you're willing to do that uh, at whatever cost, he's asking you are, you, are you mine or aren't you mine? then revelation comes in the action. Then we can believe more, we can have faith for more, and that's what leads to a life of bearing fruit for the kingdom. So in 1 Corinthians 12, seven through 11, it says the spirit has given each of us a special way of serving others. Some of us can speak with wisdom while others can speak with knowledge, but these gifts come from the same spirit. To others, the spirit has given great faith or the power to heal the sick or the power to work mighty miracles. Some of us are prophets and some of us recognize when the God's spirit is present. Others can speak different kinds of languages and still others can tell what these languages mean. But it is the spirit who does all this and decides which gifts to give to us. 
So the revelatory gifts, it's important that you know what they are. Inside this passage are words of wisdom, prophecy, discerning of spirits, and word of knowledge. Those are the revelatory gifts, and those are all moving quite accelerated in this day, in my opinion. Uh, I, I challenge you to, to go out and find out for yourself. I mean, I've been doing uh, worldwide ministry for eight years, and I have never seen things happen so fast. I've seen so many miracles of God. I was just in Brazil, I said last week, and I uh, was traveling so much within, this, within the country. I went to a beach city called Hesipi to an Anglican community there. And I do a lot of work with the Anglicans in the UK. So I love the Anglican church. And I went there. This is uh, the, the Bishop of North Brazil. This is his church. And I went to a pastor's to do a pastor's gathering for about 150 pastors before the conferences started. And I walked in and everybody's masked up to here, you know, like they barely can see their eyes. I don't know them. I know the Bishop, but I don't know anybody in this meeting. And I'm jet lagged. I've been traveling for about 10 days. I'm not particularly feeling like these people want to be there. Okay, I'm just going to tell you this is how God loves to work when your faith isn't even that great. If you choose to go, you choose to say, but hey, whatever you want to do, God, I'm good. But working in, within this, this crazy pandemic where you can't see people's facial expressions, you, you can assume all kinds of negative stuff. Or is that just me? right? You can't see people. You're like, that person doesn't like me. They're hostile. They're this, they're that, whatever, you know, crap you want to make up in your head. Cause the enemy is full of slogging that stuff at you while you're about to minister unto the Lord. So I get into this place and I see these pastors and I know that half of them are not spirit filled. They came because they're friends with the Bishop. And he told me he was going to invite all these, uh, pastors and leaders in the area who, who have never met the Holy spirit. So I get in there and I don't even really know what I should be doing because because a lot of them are sitting like this, you know, which is always just great. And I asked the Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, I want you to teach this little thing. And then I want you to tell him about some of the miracles I've just done last this week in different parts of Brazil. So I did. And I wasn't going to do a healing meeting. I had no intention of doing a healing meeting, but I ran out of things and, and there wasn't a lot of movement past the 10th row of this gathering. People behind that were just like pretty much cut off. They, they weren't participating. And so the bottom line is this, I said to the Lord, well, what do you want to do next? Do you know that sometimes when you say, what do you want to do Lord? And you start to follow him and then you don't stay with him. You don't say, what are you doing now? You just keep assuming you're going that direction. If I was with my husband, I would always ask him when we're out, what do you want to do next? I wouldn't assume that he just wants to do this one thing that he said. Relationship with God is staying in step with the spirit. That's Galatians 5, 25. What do you want to do right now, Father? I want to do what you're doing. That's why Jesus went away so often by himself. I only do what I hear the Father, or, or I only do what the Father's doing. I only say what he's saying. We have to be that close to the Lord in this time so we keep in step. I said, well, I don't know what to do next. He said, well, I'm going to heal some people. You want to do that? I was shocked. I was like, these people don't even want anyone to touch them. They're like 50 rows back. You know, they're sitting in the back with their masks up to their eyeballs. He said, when you call for healing, they'll come. And he starts downloading these words of knowledge. And I'm thinking, and I ask our team, because we, we have a, a big team worldwide, about 110 people. And they're all real trained. They're, they're beautiful. The thing I love about them the most is they love like Jesus loves and people get healed. Uh, so they all come up to the front and I'm like, you guys, you have any words of knowledge? They're like, yeah, I got a ton. Well, we didn't even talk about that. It was just instantaneous. This is what we're doing. Boom, boom, boom. You guys, I could be on this call till tomorrow morning telling you of the 150 people in that room, 99% of them got healed. That has never happened in a meeting. They didn't have a bunch of faith. They were like in the house, half of them were hostile. At the end of that meeting, I was just beside myself, I was like, God, forgive me for even thinking the things I thought, which was, how's this meeting ever gonna happen? You know, what are we going to do here? This is so not working for me. And the Lord goes, it's working for me. I want you to just stay in step with me and do what I'm doing. We had a guy come up to the front, had a word of knowledge for uh, cartilage damage in the shoulder. This guy had not moved his arm for 10 years. It was completely 
frozen to his side. Uh, he was all deteriorated in his whole shoulder joint. I used to be an exercise therapist, so I do know physiology. He used to be very, uh, he, he, he was muscular, not on this side anymore. We literally, one of the teammate uh, members that I have, Kirk, we prayed for this guy literally for one minute. And I go, Kurt, what do you got? And he goes, I just got the, a creative miracle for him. God's going to recreate his cartilage. Kurt has no background in physiology. He doesn't even know what he's saying. I know because I came from that world. But he prays very specifically by a word of knowledge exactly what God's about to create. And the guy went like this. you got to be kidding me. I mean, in Portuguese, we had to translate. And he's like, what? What? And then he goes, he goes like this. And, and I said, in Jesus' name, I bless what you're doing, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your healing angels. Thank you for total restoration of the shoulder joint. And the guy goes like this, what? And starts screaming. He was totally healed. And then I go, I, I said to Kurt, get this guy to pray for these other three people who have shoulder problems. The guy prays for them. Those three people get healed. We had a guy with, with degenerative disc disease who was in level 10 pain, instantly healed 30 seconds. Then we had 10 more backs healed. Then we had stomach uh, sickness healed. Then we had, I can't even tell you how many things. We had a collapsed arch on a right foot. Instantly the, there was an arch there, there. I mean, I just glory to God in the highest because you cannot make this stuff up. We didn't plan it, wasn't gonna do it, didn't have a ton of faith for it. But God is doing things at a very quick and accelerated pace. All right. Words of wisdom are necessary in this day. They are supernatural revelation or impartation of wisdom that's beyond your natural ability. Right? Stuff will come into your head and you'll think, I, I, I don't know that. So that must be something. Pay attention to that because it could be a key for you to have breakthrough in a region, breakthrough in your family, breakthrough for uh, healing or for uh, people to have reconciliation. When you have a supernatural revelation or impartation in a certain uh, order, like all of a sudden you walk into a room and you have this weird idea that it smells like sulfur in there or it smells like rotten eggs in there, but it isn't a physical smell. It's an impression in the supernatural that there's sulfur-like things in there. That is a gift that you may not have awakened yet called the discerning of spirits gift. And what it is, it isn't always smell. Sometimes it's a sensation. Sometimes it's actually a physical manifestation of a pattern of things that happen to somebody to let them know that there's witchcraft or occult activity in the region. Here's what happens to our team. In our team, we have uh, several people who have this gift of discerning of spirits. This is to know what spirits are operating in the area, okay? Are we good? All right, so the, 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 okay, you get massive headaches. All right, Angelique, so that's typical. We have three people on our team who have this gift, like really, really a, a great amount of it. They all get, uh, pressure like a vice grip on their head. So like Angelique, they get headaches and it comes really, really fast. Two more of them have the smell thing where it smells like sulfur. Um, we have about 10 on our team that are more uh, in the same camp as me, where I walk in and I have a thing in the bottom of my stomach. I can't tell you it's not a sickness. It feels like lead. And I walk in and I'm like, mm, I know there's witchcraft in here. I also feel uh, if I walk in a place and it's massive confusion, like there's uh, a spirit of confusion. And I say that when nothing is in order and everything seems chaotic, I'll know that there are uh, offensive spirits against God at work in there. Okay. I think that that's enough for now, but you just kind of pay attention to those things because when God's going to give you an ability to discern what spirits are in the atmosphere, he's given you the authority to take dominion over what's operating. Now we don't go after the spirits that are against God. We ask God for angelic help in the name of Jesus. We minister to the people who are being harassed by the spirits. When you get the people free, there's no more agreement for harassment. Those things leave. We're not 
Uh, if you've never read Needless Casualties of War, uh, that book is amazing and really talks about how there's no uh, biblical evidence for us going against the demonic realm in, the t in terms of um, how the hierarchical angels, the hierarchy of angels work. We are to minister to people, people and set them free in Jesus name. So prophecy is, is what is working in words of knowledge. And we need that because prophecy is the divinely inspired utterances from the Holy Spirit that are used for edification, healing and encouragement of the soul. All right, that's what that's for. So the word of knowledge in this passage of scripture is in the middle, interestingly, it's placed in the middle of the gifts of serving. I think that's great. It's in verse eight, right? So it, what I love about this verse is that it shows it's in the middle of the gifts of serving. So it allows us a glimpse into the father's heart for all people. It's a divine revelatory gift for breaking open freedom for people in captivity. It really is Jesus in action. He came to bind the brokenhearted. He came to set the captives free, to heal the sick, and so on. And this gift of word of knowledge gives us those keys so that we can do just that. They act as a prophetic promise from God. And there are three different scriptures on spiritual gifts in the Bible, but there's only one on word of knowledge. Okay? You got that, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. So it's possible that you and I would have several revelatory gifts operating at one time, but it's important to understand what each one is being used for. So sometimes a word of wisdom is needed with a word of knowledge to know how to apply it, if that makes sense. Uh, sometimes uh, when we get a prophetic word, it's for edifying and encouraging a person so that when you deliver the word of knowledge, their faith has been built up. Does that make sense? I, I can give you an example. I often get people's names or their dog's names. I love dogs. And uh, I've asked God to give me people's dog's names because it's something that makes me laugh. And I think it, it weirds people out. I mean, they're like, how would you know my dog's name? I'm like, well, I wouldn't, but God knows your dog is really important to you. So I've had so many situations where because I was asking the Lord for a key to that person's heart, he told me their dog's name. When I said, hey, do you have a dog? It's a, you know, Jack Russell Terrier and it's his name is Joe. I mean, if I can say that to somebody, then their hearts are like, are you getting me right now? And then that opens up the door for if I said, hey, I suddenly think that uh, somebody around here has back pain. Is that you? Well, maybe they're not even a believer, but after I told them they had a Jack Russell Terrier named Joe, then they're like, well, yeah, I've had back pain for like five years. And then the faith is there. And then you just pray for them and then they're healed. Okay. That's how they partner together. Um, I, I can tell you stories all night long. Oh my gosh. I, I had a husband and wife. They were triathletes. They got run off the road up in Tahoe uh, in California in a race. And they went down a mountainside. It was a horrible accident. They had broke multiple bones. Uh, during a healing time with them, the wife got healed of everything except her eye, which uh, almost was taken out. Uh, and then we were going to pray again for her eye. But the husband, like he had no movement whatsoever. I couldn't figure it out. I was sitting there talking with the Lord. And I was like, why is this guy like he's got faith. He's just nothing's moving. And the Lord, the Lord said to me, watch this. And I was like, okay. So I sat quietly. I told them I'm still praying. Just, just relax. One thing, if you're not getting anywhere, don't be in a hurry. <laughs> just take a breath. Okay. Learn to breathe with God. Take a breath and wait. God is not in a big, big hurry. We are because we think if we don't hurry, he's going to leave. <laughs> or maybe that's just me. Right. Okay. So I was sitting there and I, I just breathed and I was like, take a breath. And then the Lord, I see this weird thing. I see pictures a lot. So I saw a, uh, a waffle iron. I've told this story all over the world because of this reason. I didn't have anything. The guy had no movement. He had multiple injuries. He was in chronic pain. And I just watched Jesus heal his wife. Now, Jesus is no respecter of person. So why is this guy not getting any movement? That was my question. Your love knows no boundaries, Father. So why is this happening? 
And then I saw a waffle iron. And you guys are going to be like, you're out of your mind. I saw a white waffle iron and it looked really old and it had cracks in it. And it was not, it was, uh, it was so gross. It looked like it had been around for like 50 years and from the sixties or something. And it had, it, it, you couldn't even clean it anymore. It was such an old thing. And I heard this phrase, Papa's waffles. Tell him about Papa's waffles. And I said in my mind, I don't know what Papa's waffles are but okay lord i'll play along this is how it goes childlike faith i know nothing but i asked i said i don't have any more keys i need some keys i get a picture of a waffle iron i don't know about you but if you don't know the lord you'd go waffle iron what does that got to do with this guy's back that was broken or his, his shoulder that was dislocated his wrist that got broken his side of his face it's got abrasions it's, you know blah 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 so here's what i do i do exactly what the lord said i looked at him I'm going to call him Jeff. And I'm like, Jeff, um, you know, I just heard something from the Lord. I have no idea what this means. And if, if it doesn't mean anything, I'll just apologize after I say it. But I saw a, a white waffle iron and it has cracks and the cracks are right here. Like I could draw it on a piece of paper and show you where the cracks are. And I said, it's, it looks like it's been around since 19. And then I say it when I'm about to say it, 1968 comes out of my mouth. Like, I don't know that, but it comes out because it's a word of knowledge, because I'm willing to risk being stupid about Papa's waffles. I go 1960 and the Lord goes eight and I go eight, 1968. And then I say, does Papa's waffles mean anything to you? He bursts into tears. Oh my God, Papa's waffles, Papa's waffles. And I'm thinking, you know, you, you, honestly, you, you cannot make this up. So Papa's waffles turns out to be the key that gets this guy healed. Here's why. He's Papa. Since 1968, he's been making waffles every Sunday for his children. Now he makes waffles for his grandchildren, but he's in so much pain, he can't stand up to make waffles on Sundays for all the family like he's been doing. So he feels useless and forgotten by God. And he feels like God won't heal him because he can't even make waffles for his family. He can't work. He feels completely dependent and he hates it. So. I say, well, clearly God cares about your waffles and cares about your family and cares about you not being able to make them because he told me that story and I don't know you from Adam. So let me pray for your heart first that you feel this way and you've made these agreements that God doesn't love you and he doesn't want to heal you because he's forgotten about everything. So he breaks the agreement and asks God to forgive him for judging the Lord that he doesn't care. The minute he does all of this and I pray, pray for his back, pray everything except this finger and all the pain in this finger, everything else gets healed. This finger got healed a week later by himself when he was just praising God. So listen, you guys, these weird things are the gifts of miracles. You don't know. You, you, you have to have this kind of buoyant, childlike enthusiasm, and it's called love, love for God so much that God so loved the world, he sent you out there as his representative to pray for these people who are in bondage. So the healing word of knowledge is like a rhema word that's like prophecy. You know, it, in the Greek, it literally means utterance, but it's a, it's a word. This word of knowledge is, is a word that signifies the action of a spoken word. So, you know, the word of God, it never returns void, right? So when you speak it, things happen. So, so scripture can heal people. But if you use scripture to heal people and you do it religiously, that's not love. So if the Lord brings a scripture to your mind, I had that happen to me yesterday. I went to meet with my new certified public accountant here in Franklin, Tennessee. Don't know these people, never met them, but I like them because they have a golden retriever in their office. So I went and I sat down with them and I looked at Kurt and I said, you know, Behold, the Lord is doing a new thing. Can you not perceive it? And he gets tears in his eyes and he holds up his notebook. And he said, I was in here on my lunch hour. This is the, the attorney and the, he's an attorney CPA, runs this whole firm. He holds up this notebook and it has that scripture from Isaiah written right at the top that he had just written 30 minutes before I walked in there. Okay, why does this happen? Because he's saying, I'm so confused in this season. I don't exactly know what God is doing. And 
you walk in here, I've never met you, you're a new client, and you tell me the exact thing that God just said to me. And I said, well, let me pray for you. And then I did. Because you guys, I don't have anything you don't have. You love Jesus. He loves you. He's speaking all the time. You just got to go for it. All right. So it is this word of knowledge is the ability that you have to know what God is highlighting in this moment. What is he doing in this moment or in the future life of this person that's standing in front of you? All right. This, I'm going to just give you scriptures where you can look up where words of knowledge are in action. Uh, I don't want to read them just because for time's sake, but Mark chapter two, verse eight, write that down. John four, verse 17, Jesus with a Samaritan woman, his word of knowledge, you know, that guy's not your husband. In fact, you've had five husbands. There's a word of knowledge in order. She's at that point, she says, you're a prophet because what else is she going to say? He just read her mail, right? Um, Acts 10, 19 Peter's thinking about the vision and the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you. He has a word of knowledge of who's coming to prepare his heart so that he can act in obedience according to what God said. Luke 141, uh, Elizabeth and Mary, read that. All right. Uh, are you guys okay? Because I can't see you. It's terrible. Okay. Vic, you can't put everybody up on the screen altogether, can you? I thought. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> That's so weird. Well, yeah, because we had like put a spotlight on you so that it'd be like oh, mostly you. Did. Okay, you, you know what? Never mind. It. No, that's okay. I can, I just did it. Finally, it did okay. it. Weird. Okay. okay, we're good. Just in case God has anything else to say. All right. Sorry, I talked fast because I got a lot to give you. Are you no, guys okay? Good. And Joe, go ahead and take as much time as okay. you want. You're good. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Okay, here is how a word of knowledge comes. Can you jot this down for me? Because if you, if you operate with words of knowledge now, chances are you're only operating in two or so ways. But God never intended for you to only move in one or two realms. He wants all your senses engaged. And so here's my challenge to you, word of knowledge people who already walk proficiently in this. You need to start asking Holy Spirit to give you new ways to receive those words of knowledge. It's uncomfortable, especially, man, when you roll in it already. I roll in this stuff and I'm like, I don't know that I want to feel it. You know, I lived in pain for 14 and a half years. I don't really want to feel those words of knowledge, not into it. But sometimes in order to have the compassion of Jesus, I need to feel a word of knowledge. And I don't get those very often. And I think that's the mercy of God because I lived in pain for so long. So you can think it. It's like a mental thought. It might be a name. It might be an address, a phone number. Could be the name of an illness, the name of a body part. So you, you think it, all right? So I'm gonna give you all of the seven ways that you get it and then I'll break them down for you. So you think it, you read it, you read it, you see it, you say it, you experience it, you dream it, you feel it. Okay, let me run it down one more time. You think it, you read it, you see it, experience it, dream it, and feel it. Okay, I want you to say that. You think it, say think it, you think it, read it, repeat that, see it, say it, experience it, dream it, feel it. Okay, I'm sure Jess and Vic are gonna put a dance routine together at the campsite with those things. All right, so <laughs> if you read it, it might be in your mind, you're actually seeing words. It could be this. If you're a very visual, imaginative person, you might actually see a phrase over somebody's head or you might see it on the wall or the ceiling. Remember. Daniel chapter five, 
Belshazzar sees a hand creating an inscription on the wall and Daniel interprets it, right? I was praying for a guy one time and I saw the word fear going like a ping pong game over his head. And it was a word, it was like really distorted and it went boom, 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 boom. As he was walking towards me, I was like, that's weird. And it was fast and then it went away. And when the guy came up, he was coming for some type of orthopedic condition that he needed healing from, but it turned out that he had chronic anxiety. So when we went to the root of the chronic anxiety, I didn't even need to pray for the orthopedic condition. It just was gone. So that word of knowledge, again, is the key thing for the root issue that's plaguing that person or the key that unlocks the door that lets you in so faith can take root, all right? Um, that guy also suffered from OCD. So he was completely healed of obsessive compulsive disorder and anxiety that night. Praise the Lord, yay! Uh, but his, ba his, uh, his back or his shoulder, I can't remember which, uh, was totally healed. So if you see it, now we're on that, you might see an area of the body that God wants to heal, or you might see how they got injured. We have people in our ministry that dream about the accidents, and that's part of seeing it and dreaming it. Uh, they'll come to a meeting and they'll say, um, somebody has uh, internal organ damage, uh, you were in a car accident, blue Volkswagen. I mean, that's how detailed. And they dreamt it. So they dreamt it and they saw it. And they saw the body part that got injured in the natural. And then in the supernatural, they dreamt the whole thing beforehand. So you might have two things operating at once. So when you see it, it's similar to Acts 16, 9, and 10, where Paul has a vision of the Macedonian man that's pleading for him to come to them and preach the gospel. He saw it and he knew that's what he needed to pray for and ask for. All right. If you say it, it is like the, the blurting out of stuff. That's how I get things most often. So if you look in the Old Testament at the word for prophecy used most often, it's the word nabi, N-A-B-I. And that word in Hebrew means it's, it's word pictures. Hebrew is a beautiful language. It means the bursting up from the ground of an underground spring. So powerful does it burst up from the ground. It comes up with such force that you can't stop it. That's what saying it is like. If I say one word that I have from God, it's like a cork coming out of a bottle and then the rest of it, it just pours forth. Does anybody get words like that? Your, or your prophetic words are like that? Yeah. So I, you know, when you get words like that, um, it's a lot of fun, but it's also pretty unnerving because you don't know what's going to come out. Uh, <laughs> I never know what's going to come out, but what's really interesting is to try to grow the other, the other ways of hearing uh, God, the other ways of getting those words of knowledge, instead of just being a blurter your whole life, try and work on those other ways. All right. Uh, let's go to, um, experiencing it. All right. This is kind of weird. You might experience something that is out of the ordinary, um, that you know, you've never been there, you don't, you don't really know what's going on, uh, but you have, you're, you're in the middle of something. You might be in the middle of a vision that you're seeing. You might uh, have a download from the Lord that you have no idea what, what that even is or what, how to make sense of it. Um, I will tell you when, it, when the experiencing it and the feeling it work in tandem, it's kind, it's kind of odd. Normally, if it's, I'll get to feeling in a second, but normally if you get the feeling it thing, it's a pain that comes on your body and it doesn't last more than 60 to 90 seconds. Feeling it is a actual literal feeling of the injury or the place where there's an injury. And it's usually a shooting pain or a burning sensation or something. And it lasts 60 to 90 seconds at most. But this weird thing that happens very rarely with experiencing it and feeling it, if they are combined, which sometimes when God wants to do something huge, it happens. We had someone on our team, we were doing a, a ministry event and uh, there was a lot of skepticism in the room, not a lot of spirit filled people, but the Lord wanted to do healing. And she had had back pain to the point of stooping over for three days. And here's what I said to her, cause I didn't ask the Lord. I said, Michelle, 
that back pain is your own back. She goes, no, it isn't. I'm experiencing it. And it's a word of knowledge. I'm feeling it. It's back pain. God's going to heal people at that, at that gathering. And I said, baloney, because it's lasted for three days. You have a bad back. That's what it is. And she did this to me, whatever, Joe Moody, shut your pie hole. I know what it is. <laughs> it's my back is on fire and in pain and people are going to get healed. And I, you know, this is when you are family with people, you can do that. You know, I was, I just laughed at her. I was like, whatever we get in there and I give a word of knowledge for back pain. Listen, you guys, 35 people got up in this meeting of about 400 people, 35 people get up, stand across the front and they all have excruciating situations with their backs, herniated discs, uh, degenerative disc disease, whatever. And Michelle turns and looks at me. She's all, and I said, that doesn't prove anything. <laughs> That's okay. How would you like to work with me? It's great. All right. So she goes, she goes, well, I'm going to pray for him. I go, have at it, sister, go ahead. So she, she just starts to invite the Lord to come. And she goes, she and I, and a bunch of our team, we go down the line and these people, half of them fall out in the spirit. Every single one of them, 35 people get healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Michelle's back pain disappears. Boom. The minute the last one got healed, she just goes, straightens up and goes, take that, Joe Moody. <laughs> I just love the Lord because you know what? In the middle of healing people, you can be proved wrong all the time. It's so great. Okay. So you can experience something weird and it, and it never happens again, but pay attention pay attention. It could, you know, it might just be the Lord. All right. So the feeling it thing, it, it is a pain that you normally know is not yours at all. It could simply be discomfort in your body somewhere. And it could even be super fast, like 10 seconds. Um, when I get them, it doesn't, it doesn't last very long. I, I, told the Lord, I didn't want to have that way. So when I do get them, it's pretty quick. I walked by a woman, uh, in a meeting, I wasn't doing healing, but I instantly had knee pain and I don't have any pain anymore. So I said to a whole crowd of people, thousands of people, but whoever was right around me right then, I haven't been walking by. I said, who over here has knee pain? And this lady goes me and her, and her knee was like a balloon. And she came out of that row. She was about to have knee replacement. And we just said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And her, you guys, I know this sounds crazy, but I've seen it thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of times. The knee just went like this and shrunk to a normal size right in front of us. And all the people around her were like, what the heck is happening right now? She got completely healed. She's part of our ministry team today. She gives her testimony everywhere. And every time she prays for people's knees, they get healed because she has faith for that. It's so nuts. I was in, before Brazil, I was in uh, Franklin, where I live in Tennessee, and I went to a coffee shop with some friends. My friend, Richard, he, he fell on a step and he almost broke his ankle. And he shows up at the coffee shop and he's limping and he's with some friends. And I look at them and I said, how come you guys didn't pray for him? How come you're waiting for me to pray for him? And they go, we did, but he's still in pain. And I said, take your shoe off. Richard, in the coffee shop. This is how it needs to be, everybody. I'm talking about what God's doing right now. He takes off his shoe in the coffee shop. His foot's black. His, his, his uh, ankle's black. His toes are black because he, he nearly broke the whole ankle and he's got coagulated blood in, in this foot. And I take a look at that thing. It's like a balloon. The thing is just huge. And my friends are like this, looking at me. Now the coffee shop's packed out. We're right in front of the barista. We got a table right there. I'm like, well, Jesus, you know what? I just flew in from another trip. I was super tired. And, and these moments are opportunities to let God do what he does. I just prayed super simply. And the, his foot started to turn pink. He yells. The barista comes and hangs over the counter like this, like looking at us. And then two people that are friends of ours are in the other side of the coffee shop. I didn't even see them, but they are not, they are cessationists. They do not believe in healing is for today. They stand up and come over and they're friends of Richard's and they're standing there with their hands on their hips watching while I pray 
and my husband's there. My husband's praying with me. And this foot goes from black to totally pink. We watch the ankle be a normal size. And I don't say a thing except thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. And these two women are going, what is going on? What's going on? And I said, Jesus is healing Richard. And Richard's like, that's right. That's right. It's the Holy Spirit. That's right. My whole, my whole leg's on fire. And watching what's happening in the atmosphere where people don't believe in God, they don't believe healings for today, and God decides to crash in when it's most inconvenient for you. You don't really want to do it. And God completely heals Richard inside a coffee shop. And I'm sitting there in tears thinking, but for the grace of God and the love of God, do we get to partner with this incredible, majestic, holy, amazing father? And he does these things right out in the open. If you know the will of God, you know that he wants to heal people. You know that he wants to use you. When you get a word of knowledge, it is your understanding and your invitation that this is the will of God in action right now. And then you step out in simple, simple faith. These words of knowledge build your faith. So how do you use them? I want to tell you, there is, we teach our teams, we teach around the world, all kinds of prayer models, how to pray for the sick, how to do this, how to do that. And after I teach all that, I always tell everybody, once you've learned all these formulas, throw them out. The reason why you have formulas and you have steps is so you can stop your nervousness. Once you stop your nervousness, then you can let the Holy Spirit do the one-step prayer model, which is the love of Jesus through the prophetic utterances of God, right? How many of you know prayer models and you pray them right now? Can you hold your hand up? Okay. So, you know, the bottom line is this. I, I, I could go through a whole prayer model thing. I, I just think that what's most important for this day is that when you get a word of knowledge from, from the Lord for somebody, or you get a word of wisdom and you get this invitation from the Lord to go approach somebody, can we agree that we're just going to be ambassadors of love? Can, can we just be encouragers? I think that we're so busy in our stream trying to be relevant with this wow, wow, crazy prophetic word. You know, I walked through an airport not too long ago and I said to the Lord, I'm sorry, I've been so busy doing ministry. I, I actually haven't prayed for anybody in an airport in a while. I normally pray for people in airports a lot, but I just was really, really tired, just traveling so much. And I was ignoring people in airports and ignoring the Lord, frankly. And uh, I just said, Father, I really am sorry. I, I love doing that with you because it's always so extraordinarily unusual. Thousands of healing stories in airports that just made me just sit there and sob. And he said, well, there's a man right in front of you. And I was like, oh, it's a man with pushing a cart of garbage that's like a mountain high through the Houston airport. And he has a back brace on. I didn't even have a word of knowledge because he had a back brace on. <laughs> and I just walked up to him and I said, hey, I'm Joe. And you look like you're in pain. And he started to cry. He's a small man and he's behind all this garbage. Nobody can even see him. And I'm pretty sure nobody ever sees him in that airport. And I had a chance in a moment, I had literally five minutes to just be the love of God for this man. I prayed for his back. His pain went from six to zero, but he wasn't even thrilled about that. I mean, that's great. I'm very grateful to God. He was more enamored that somebody stopped to speak to him and to tell him that God hadn't forgotten about him and to tell him how much he was loved and to hug him. Sometimes we underestimate the power of the simplicity of the gospel in just being love first. And I, and I just want to tell you that as you step forward and you pray for people, um, how you pray is always by the measure of your faith. So if you're praying according to trying to be relevant or trying to work something up, then you're going to pray really long prayers. That actually doesn't have God do anything. And we're also not commanding God to do stuff. People, some people don't like commanding style prayer. Well, when I see Jesus healing people, he just says a word and then it happens. 
because it's all about authority and power. When Jesus did a miracle, when he did a creative miracle and people were raised from the dead and people had things happen like the blind saw and the deaf uh, heard and the lame walked, he did that through power. But when he told the demonic forces to leave, when he told Legion to leave, when he, when he, he uttered the word, that was with authority. You need to know the difference between power and authority and when to use what. And if you do a simple Bible study with the Holy Spirit in Mark, Mark's a short gospel. Use Mark. He's pretty succinct. Go through the book of Mark and, and underline every time Jesus did a miracle and every time he commanded the demons to leave. And you will see authority and power at work. And then it will teach you when to use what because you've been given as a kingdom ambassadors you have been given his authority and his power but we have to know when to use it so when you pray for a person you first go up to them and i and i can finish with this they're not your project they're, they're not your assignment they're a, they're a child of god and when you go up to them if you can't approach them with compassion and with love and with joy, don't go. Because some days are not such good days, are they? I mean, you know, every day should be a great day in the Lord. Uh, but here we live on planet Earth and some days are just not. So until you can be that catalyst of, of love, uh, don't go. But you might find that if you go, you'll be a catalyst of love because you'll be so shocked at how God showed up in the middle of your bad attitude. <laughs> so if you will walk up to somebody, look them in the eye, introduce yourself and ask them their name. That's the first thing about healing. Who are you? And don't make them a project. And then say, hey, I don't know if this makes sense to you. Um, I, I believe Jesus heals today and, and I'm practicing hearing God. And I think I heard that you have a headache back here. If that's not true, I'm sorry. But if it's true, would you let me pray for you? That is the most invitational kind of, you know, I'm not here to convert you. I'm not here to make you do anything. I'm not here to have you pray a big prayer so that I can feel like you just gave your life to Christ. I am here to bless you with seeds. I'm a seed sower. And if everybody in the kingdom would do that, then we would see salvations come like that because we're all sowing. And this is a season where we're going to reap and it's going to overtake the sowing, but we got to get out there and we got to do it. All right. So if they say, yeah, I mean, I've had this headache like all day, then you say this simple thing. Hey, if 10 was the worst pain you could have and zero was no pain, like, where would you say that is right now? So maybe they say, oh, it's like, it's like a seven. And then you go, okay, cool. I am going, to, is it okay if I touch you? That's always good. You know, I've prayed for Heathrow cops in the airport and slid my hand under their flak jacket and never even asked them. It's not a good idea. You should probably ask people if you can pray for them. It's much nicer. So you ask if you can touch them. If they don't want you to touch them because it's COVID and all that, you don't need to touch them. God can touch them. Okay. But if they will, sometimes human contact, uh, it, it does something to break down barriers. So you can Put your hand where, where they said it, they had pain. Invite the Holy Spirit. You are, in, you are indwelled with the Holy Spirit. We all are. But invite Holy Spirit to come and take over this whole healing thing. Because without him, we can't do anything anyway. And then I always ask for God to send healing angels because he sends his angels concerning you to lift you up so you won't even stub your toe. I would like to have all the help I can get because Lord knows I need it. So I ask for the Holy Spirit to take over. I ask for his angels to come who are on assignment of, over me for that area. I specifically ask for angels of healing or whatever I'm doing. So in that moment, I simply pray, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command all this pain to go. And then I ask them how it is. So that is checking it out. How's it going? What do you feel like? now? If you walked up with a word of knowledge, because you, you said, oh, I, you know, I, I think that I heard God said you have pain back here. If there is any other key to their healing, like they just got in a car accident the day before, and now they're having headaches. If you get any other keys, 
you can, or you don't, and you pray a couple times like that and nothing happens, you can say this very informative question. Hey, when this happened to you, was anything going on? You don't have to start listing things like, did you have an accident? Did somebody say something to you? Did you, blah, blah, blah. you know, we're not doing 50 questions. We're having a conversation. Just say, was anything significant going on when this pain happened to you? Or in the last few days, weeks, whatever, has anything significant happened to you? Many, many times we pray for people. They've just had a loved one die and they've got pain in their body. They, they've just had somebody uh, in their family uh, come at them in a burst of anger. They're in an abusive situation. There's a lot of underlying roots to things that are there, but sometimes it's just a matter of praying for the physical. So for our time's sake tonight, let's concentrate on that. Let's say we're praying for the person with a headache right here. And we pray in the name of Jesus, I command this pain to go. And they started with level seven pain. And all of a sudden they're like, wow, I feel heat on my neck right here. And my, and you say, well, your pain was a seven. What is it now? And they say, yeah, it's like a, it's like a five. And then I want you to get them to just say, acknowledge that something's happening. And you need to be in a grateful heart, which I know you will be saying thanks to God, but you can say to them, Hey, can you thank God for doing that? I'm telling you, I have belie unbelievers, atheists all day long. They'll say, Hey, thanks God. I don't even believe in God because they know something's happening to them. And as you begin to pray again, simple, you don't have to make the prayer longer. You don't have to like, you know, we're not begging God and we're drawing on the atonement of what Christ paid for. That's what we're doing. All right. And, and you pray until there is no more pain or you run out of uh, prayers or you run out of time and the person doesn't want you to pray anymore. You only stop when it's at zero unless the person goes, yeah, I mean, this is good. Uh, sometimes the pain will go to one or two and you're out of time. You didn't fail. We've seen God, listen, I've prayed for blind eyes to be open and they didn't. And two weeks later, the person woke up and could see. You don't know. God is mysterious. We do not understand. I Just coming from Brazil, we had all kinds of leaders and teachers at Voice of the Apostles on my trip two times ago, a couple months ago. And there were two people in wheelchairs. We all prayed for them. But during a lunch break, when all the speakers were in the back getting lunch, 1,500 people stayed in the sanctuary praising God. There was no worship team. There was nobody leading in there. But these Brazilians are so passionate about revival. They were praying in the spirit and they were singing. And all of a sudden, we ran out of the green room onto the platform only to see two wheelchairs up and two people walking. And there was no anointed person out there doing it. It was an anointed army of God worshiping the king and the spirit of God came and healed two people. One of them had been in a wheelchair for 12 years. Come on, that's what we're talking about. This is the army of God rising up and this is what we're seeing God do today. So I want you to put your hands out. I wanna pray for you. Our teams have seen hundreds of thousands of healings in, eight, in only eight years. I am imagining what we will see through you because I know our God is faithful and I know he desires to use every single person who believes he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and who dares to take him at his word and do what he said to do, heal the sick, make the demons flee and raise the dead. So heavenly father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, that every son and every daughter on this zoom call, father, that your spirit would be released right now in the name of Jesus. I've seen you heal fourth stage cancer on Zoom. I've seen you open blind eyes on Zoom. I've seen you heal every pediatric condition on Zoom. Whoever is sick on this call right now, Father, we just speak to their bodies and we say be healed in Jesus' name. And Father, everything that our team of Agape Freedom Fighters carries in healing and in miracles, would you come right now? Would you release Holy Spirit every gift Wake up every anointing that is upon their lives right now in Jesus' name. And I declare over you that you will move in signs and in wonders. And you, as you move in these signs, you will wonder at God. And over and over, you will see salvations come, healings come, 
sickness healed in Jesus name right now father I just hear you saying that you are giving them territory over cancer so father I say right now let cancer be done in the name of Jesus let every cell be annihilated in the name of Jesus and as they lay their hands on the sick and they speak in your name that everything about cancer will be done in Jesus name. Father, I thank you right now that we need an army of lovers to go after Lou Gehrig's disease that is just ripping people's lives apart. Father, I say right now there is nothing too hard for you. So we take authority over Lou Gehrig's disease and we say let the anointing fall for that and let them be the boldest warriors, the boldest lovers going forward and healing every single person they lay their hands on. Father, right now give them authority and a reminder that you have all authority and you've given it to them over trauma. In Jesus' name, over trauma, over Generation Z, over the millennials, over Alpha Gen. Father, all the generations to be cut loose from a spirit of trauma and anxiety. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And Father, I ask, ooh, come on, Master. Yeah, Lord, I ask right now. Yeah, come on. Thanks, Lord. I just ask right now that you would just let heaven fall that heaven fall on each one of them and the words of knowledge to come even in the middle of the night. And in your workplace, as I say, there are people around you all day, wherever you work, that are in need of the doctor and the doctor's Jesus, and he wants to use you to heal them. I pray right now when you go to work tomorrow, you're going to get words of knowledge coming to you. Pay attention. They're like a bug that goes by. They're so fast. Pay attention. Step out. Immediate obedience is where miracles occur. So, Father, thank you for what's going to happen. Thank you for what's going to happen tomorrow and every day after in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I bless every single one of you. I just see miracles popping out. Uh, Shane, God, I didn't recognize you for a second. Your hair got so long, and I love it. Shane, you, there's miracles coming o- over you right now. I just keep seeing the Lord uh, putting all these keys, revelatory keys over you, and I feel like even... Uh, a greater boldness is coming upon you to be accurate, really, really accurate with your words of knowledge right now. Um, Kevin, you also have, you have a boldness on your life. You have a great uh, adventurous spirit. You're like all about cowabunga, come on, let's go. You're like Mr. Wildman. And so the Lord says, be wild with me. Don't be wild ahead of me. I feel like the Lord is saying to you right now, he's pulling you like right into him really, really close. And he's going, I'm going to give you all my secrets. You've been praying for this for a long time. Like you're built for the wildness of God and you're built to go after Gen Z. They are going to love you, dude, because you are all about the supernatural. So everything that God has given our sons in our ministry and our daughters in our ministry, I just say, release that over Kevin right now in Jesus name that you will never shirk back. You're going to go to some dark places on this planet too, dude. You want to travel the world and see all the people that need to get set free in Jesus name. I actually see you uh, in the, in the prisons. I see you in the slums. I see you all over. Uh, I don't know if you're going down to the DR or Haiti or any place like that, but I see you in that region. I also see you. I, we just came from the favelas in, in Brazil, in the slums. I see you in places like that. Uh, dude, you're going to take teams with you though. Uh, the Lord's telling me to tell you no Lone Ranger stuff because uh, you could do that. You actually like to go fast. So hardly anybody can keep up with you, but you need to train up a young team, young guys, uh, young guys, young girls, and they'll go with you. Um, Fontes, is that how you say your name? How do you say your name, dude? I love, is that your name? That's a killer name. I love that. Yeah, you, uh, you are a preacher. Do you know that you're a preacher? You know you're a preacher? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, while I don't know where you preach or what you're preaching, but I feel like you are like one of those people that can preach anywhere, anytime. Like the word of God to you is like, it's your food, but you are in a season right now where I feel like the Lord is saying about you, when you preach, watch how he's going to heal. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pay attention wherever you're preaching. If there's like three of your friends there and you're like, yeah, but Jesus said, blah, blah. Uh, I want you to make sure you pay attention Tell people while you're preaching, God's healing bodies. He's going to heal while you're preaching. And you're not even going to say what the condition is. The Lord is going to heal them while the word is being preached. And they, and ask them as soon as they feel something changing in their body to stand up and you bless what God is doing. You simply stop what you're saying in wherever that is. And you say, in Jesus name, I bless your body right now. And, and, and they're going to get healed. 
It's so different, but I see that on your life and I see it as such a manifestation of glory over you. Uh, you're a person who's tarried hard to hang on to God. And I feel like all the people you've prayed for in your family and people that have been friends of yours, that Lord, the Lord's going to set them free because you keep contending for them. You are no joke in the spirit realm. You're an intercessor and you stand up and you go, no, we're not. You, you're like, you're justice. You're all about justice. And the Lord is going to take up your fight for you. And he is going to bring down heaven over you when you preach the word of God. Uh, so father, I thank you, Jillian, you're the sweetest thing. Uh, you are a sweet girl, but you're smart. Um, the Lord says that, uh, that you are like a trailblazer in your family. I feel like you have people of faith in your family, but they're not faith like your faith. You are like uh, faith on steroids and they actually think you're a little bit freakish. Don't let them intimidate you. You're going to lead your family. They're watching to see if it's legit. They're watching to see if signs, wonders, and miracles are legit. And, and they're not, they don't doubt you because they know you're smart and they, they trust you. you're a good, you're a good young woman. I mean, you, you do the right thing. You're really kind and you're super generous and you're very loving, uh, but they're waiting to see if it's legit. I know right now in Jesus name, it's been hard for you sometimes because you don't want to make excuses and you don't want to try to convince anybody. You just want Jesus to show up. So I'm telling you right now, as you step out, Jesus is going to show up just like he showed up with Jesse's dad at the revival meetings where her father just decided to come. And then he got healed randomly by the side of the trailer. That stuff's going to happen for you. And then your family's going to go, oh, wow, I'm so sorry. We didn't know. Okay. Big risk for you. That means being uncomfortable and stepping out. Let me just see if anybody else, uh, the Lord just, I could do that, but I'm not going to. So uh, let me see. Um, Gabriel, you're another sweetie. Oh my God. You are a tender man of God. Listen, Gabriel, how old are you? I'm 26. I was going to say 20. Uh, you are so young, but here's what I heard the father say about you. You are a father to those who don't have one. And, Amen. and you, don't, you don't know that yet because you're so young, sweetie. But you have got this heart. It's just huge. And you have a mercy gift. And sometimes you feel like you're just going to fall down under the pressures of the people that you see around you are in so much pain. Listen, I just, I pray over you right now, sweetie, that you have the mercy gift of the father, but it's never going to take you out. Okay. Once you feel the pain of people, you give it back to Jesus so that you can actually move forward and, it, and you don't come under that spirit of pain. Amen. So Amen. I just pray over you right now, whatever you did not get in the natural, the Lord is giving you in the supernatural and you are going to be a father to the fatherless. And you're going to be a father of this generation that you are actually, you're right on the border of Gen Z and millennials. And you're, you are going to be a father to millennials. Amen. All these young men and women who have no understanding of family, you're going to create family wherever you go. And you learn, you learn bits of the gospel, you learn bits of scripture, and then, then you just give it away. You, you're not like a whole, like, let me just like do the whole thing. You, you get these nuggets of wisdom and then you go and you just give them away to people. And I just see the Lord so proud of you, uh, of what you've overcome. He loves you dearly, sweetie. You don't know how much he loves you. He approves of you. you you're not a big mess up and you got to stop thinking the way you think about yourself, that, that you need to be better. You're thinking like that a lot. And the Lord says, I love you just like you are. You, I made you in my image. I made you beautiful. I made you the Amen. most stellar, incredible human being. So I just bless okay. you, honey. Don't let that stuff ever come in your head again. Next time it comes in, you just go, no, I know who I am. Get out in Jesus name. That stuff's left Amen. over from your family line. Okay. Um, Amen. So we don't need that on there. Okay. Listen, guys, here's what I want to do. I want you to repeat after me. We're going to all pray this, this prayer to just make sure that we're all like in the right place with Jesus and our family lines just don't have any hold. There are on, uh, on it from your family line, but I want you to just close your eyes and you can, can you guys hear me? Okay. It's okay. All right. Uh, I want you guys just to pray after me. I want you to say, thank you, Heavenly Father. 
for the inheritance that you've given me in Jesus. Thank you that I am your ambassador, that I'm your child, that I'm your kingdom priest, I'm your royal heir, and in your name, I will heal the sick and cast out demons and raise the dead. And in the name of Jesus, I place the blood of Jesus between me and my entire family line as a wall of separation. Any right of the demonic to afflict me or repress me because of the sins of the generations before me is cut off now. In Jesus' name, I cut off any weapon of warfare planned against me. And I place the blood of Jesus between me and all the future generations through my family line. And I cut off any right of the demonic to oppress or afflict future generations because of my own sin. And I thank you, Father, that you have given our family line a spiritual inheritance and so many blessings. And I release those over future generations because you have given them to me to freely give away. Give me ears to hear. Give me eyes to see all that you are doing and saying in this season and that I would be a first responder the moment you give me invitation. Perfectly positioned to bring in the harvest that's right at our door. In Jesus' name. A. Men. Men. So, so good. Yay, Lord. You. You're welcome. So great oh to be God. with you guys. Oh, thank you so much for taking the time to do that with us. You are it's a pleasure. amazing. Um, oh, he's amazing. Super fun. You guys are awesome. Can't wait to see so many of you in person. So, so good. And then it was so, I mean, it was a lot of information, which is amazing. So um, it's all being recorded. We'll post it so that you guys can even watch it again later. If you missed any parts of it, we'll post the whole thing so you don't have to miss any of it. Um, yeah, just a huge, huge thank you. Thanks, Joe, You're so welcome, much. Yeah, um, so and then, to be with you. yeah, and then our next call will be next month. Um, so um, I'll share all the links in the group as well because I know they kind of got buried um, at, in the chat, which is fine. Um, but just so you know, I'll put them back in there too. But thank you so much, guys. We love you. Thanks, Joe. We love you so much. I love you guys. See you soon. Bye. Bye.